In this video, I am going to respond to all the serious questions and substantive comments that came in thus far to my previous video, the shadowing demonstration. I'd like to say I always strive to make serious substantive videos and I not only welcome, I, I crave these kinds of comments, but the comment section is not the right place to answer them. They're very hard to see and read and index. So I will either make videos like this to answer them or better yet, I have mentioned I'm setting up a new website that will have a question and answer a uh, section where these kind of things can be indexed and more easily found by other people in the future. I'd also like to say uh, that as I restart my video making, I am very much intending to acknowledge all the comments that come in, but there is some sort of problem on YouTube. It shows you that you have about 20% uh, of the comments that you get you can't see them for some reason. I've reported this, they're looking into it, but um, if I have not acknowledged a comment that you made, it's because uh, it's not showing up on my screen, even though it might show up on your screen that it's posted. First of all, questions about English. The most questions came in about the fact that in the demonstration I was shadowing not only Ojibwe, but English, and people were saying, why was I doing that? Do I like doing that? Is it good to do that? Should you be doing that? Do I like to shadow material that has English on it to begin with? And um, no, 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 no. The answer to all of those questions is no. The only reason I'm doing it is precisely because this is a demonstration and I wanted everybody to be able to follow it. If I were to do it in any one particular language, only people who happen to know that language might really be able to follow along with what I was doing. But I hope that by doing this, everybody would uh, be clear as to what I was doing, that I was listening and repeating simultaneously to what I was hearing. Um, but there is no, if you are shadowing a Pimsleur method, and if something like this, an all audio method, as I've mentioned in my past previous couple of videos, you cannot take the English off. There's no uh, value in doing it. There's no need to do it. Um, so again, I, I was only doing it because it is a demonstration. Then there was a very good question about whether you should be thinking while you're shadowing, consciously cogitating and contemplating the answers that you're going to get, formulating the ideas and trying to um, be aware of, of what you should be saying. Um, and I would like to answer this very carefully because I'm very much in favor of awareness and, and conscious language learning. I love analysis and I love understanding how things, grammar and everything fits together. I find that the conscious language learning process is a much more interesting phenomenon to me than simply acquiring from environment. And, and I think it's more um, in depth, more, more effective ultimately. Uh, and there's certainly uh, plenty of, uh, well, what's the quote? Um, there's, for every, there's a season for everything and a time for every matter under heaven. And we need to be aware of that. So the time for Conscious analysis is when you're sitting by yourself in front of a, a reference book that you can look at, or better yet, a teacher or a tutor whom you can ask. But when you're working with a recording, shadowing uh, something, uh, that it can't answer you. Uh, but if you listen carefully, you can tell if you're speaking uh, accurately on top of the sound that you're hearing or not. So that's what you need to be paying attention to, not consciously formulating things. So, um, yeah, there is a, a time for... Um, Pavlovian patterning and behavioristic imprinting, and uh, this is it. Then there was a set of questions regarding um, levels or stages of shadowing and types of materials that you can be using. Um, if you're new to my channel and new to the concept of shadowing, I invite you to look at my playlist on methodology. Many years back, I made multiple videos about shadowing where I talked about specific different stages, different types of shadowing, different materials that you could use. So to answer the question, yes, this here, what I did on this demonstration was for total beginners, but you can do shadowing at any stage or level of 
language knowledge uh, from total beginner, in which case, yes, you obviously are going to use this kind of didactic material um, to when you are getting advanced and when you are very advanced to using audio books that are for native speakers. And at that stage, um, what I really like to think of myself as more than a polyglot is as, as, as being polyliterate and my concept of polyliteracy is being able to really enjoy the the literature the culture the uh, of, of the languages that you have learned and to me this is the most delicious aspect of being polyliterate is that most people i think can read with their eyes and in modern times we've listen to audiobooks so you can read with our ears but when you're polyliterate and you practice shadowing as you do this you are narrating in essence so polyliteracy and is a part of the practice involves narrating the best literature in in the language that you've learned by listening to and shadowing it at the same time so yes obviously you can do this at at, in, at any stage of your language journey and with all different kinds of materials That led to a question about speed um, and finding the right balance between moving on from didactic materials when you're a beginner and then you become more advanced and you try to go on to uh, audiobooks that are intended for native speakers and you might find that they're too fast as a bridge that you need to cross. Um, yeah, that's real. I mean, uh, didactic materials are spoken in this particular tone and uh, get, crossing that bridge can be um, a bit challenging, but you, you'll get there with time. Um, you can. One thing you can do is slow the material down a little bit. It doesn't distort it too much, but I would say a better thing to do is just look a bit more widely uh, for some other materials. Not everybody speaks at the same speed or anything, and this is really something to consider when you're moving on beyond didactic materials that are teaching you specific aspects of the grammar to using native materials. You should really be um, choosing uh, the voice very carefully. You want to find somebody who has an accent you like, a tone that you like, intonation, everything. Definitely want to find somebody of the same gender as your voice so you can pattern it the, the best. So I would say rather than um, just taking one material, listen to it and saying, oh, it's too fast, um, go on to a site like um, Audible and listen to a variety of samples until you find somebody who probably doesn't speak quite that fast and has a, is a better match for um, your voice. Um, and then finally, I would say if you have not done shadowing the way I showed it in the demonstration, that is walking rapidly, you might want to give that a try. That is truly my experience that that gets your whole system moving fast and then it makes it actually easier to, um, to shadow fast material when you're walking fast than if you're just sitting down. <laughs> Then there were some questions about um, keeping up with shadowing, not just in terms of the speed, but in terms of not tripping up, not tripping up over your tongue and, and, and stumbling in the pauses and needing to stop. And somebody in particular wanted to know how many times I had practiced this particular lesson in order to get to this level. They thought they didn't do it 50 times. And uh, honestly, this was take two. I didn't practice this at all. Um, a couple of months back, as I mentioned in my earlier videos, I got access to all the PEMSA courses. And so I did listen to Ojibwe once back a couple of months ago. But uh, for this demonstration, I just decided to do it because it's, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm in Ojibwe territory. I thought it'd be nice to do it outside, but I hadn't practiced it. And the only reason I did two takes is because on take one, um, it was a, a much warmer than I thought it was. I started out, I was wearing a sweater uh, and uh, I got very hot, uh, but I had to keep going because I was doing it. And also I'd never um, done a video while I was walking and holding a camera, my, my, my phone in front of me. And I got it in my head. I should just hold it in one hand the whole time so that it would not shake too much. And so by the end of uh, take one, I, I was absolutely miserable looking. I was sweating, I was in pain, and that showed. And I want to encourage people to do this and not think that they're going to end up like that. So um, I needed to do a second take. But um, I, on top of that, I mean, I have been shadowing languages actively for 25 years. And I do think that shadowing is uh, its practice. Uh, and it is like a form of exercise. Um, 
uses the muscles in your tongue and in, in your eardrum. I don't know if they're muscles in your eardrum, but as an analogy, um, yeah, stick with an analogy. I mean, there are exercises like push-ups that maybe you can't do very many and you want to do more. And if you embark on a program and you do it slowly and carefully, you'll you'll get up there. But if you try to do too much too fast, um, you'll hurt yourself. You have to stop and keep starting all over. So um, shadowing might be something that you need to build up to, like a form of exercise. Um, and in that regard, I think there are two things that might help. One would be I could backtrack, well, not backtrack, but um, go back to the idea of shadowing English, um, not as something mixed together with a target language that you're trying to learn. But if you do find yourself stumbling when you try to um, shadow a foreign language, if English is your native language, uh, try shadowing stuff in your native language first. And maybe that's a way to build up to um, shadowing more in uh, uh, foreign languages. And the other thing that you can do is um, it helps to close your eyes. Um, I mentioned walking fast. Uh, you don't want to walk fast and close your eyes. Uh, they preclude each other, obviously. Um, but if you have a hard time uh, keeping up, the more senses you can block off, um, maybe closing your eyes might help as well. Finally, there was a question about time blocks for shadowing, how much time one ought to devote to it, whether it ought to be 15 minutes a day or, or what. And in particular, um, if you're polyliterate, polyglot, and you've got multiple languages to juggle, how, how, how to divide that among um, these times. I, I very much appreciate this question, but it's not something that I can give a, a general answer to. This is something on an individual case-by-case -case basis. I, I can give advice and consultation on that. Um, but um, as a general rule, I can just say, on the one hand, you don't need to shadow for a very long period of time to get benefits from it. But on the other hand, um, particularly when you're really relishing and narrating the literature in the language, the longer you can do it, the better. But tying back into what I just said about keeping up, it's a, it's a practice. It's an exercise. It's something you need to work up to. I believe that answers all the substantive questions and comments that came into my uh, video on a shadowing demonstration of Jibwe in Bemidji State Park over the past couple of days. I would love to move on to my next topic, uh, my, uh, my request. I've seen people asking me to give more information about my other main technique of scriptorium, and I would be very pleased to, to do that. But I think before that, I need to make uh, another shadowing demonstration video to sort of clear all the things that were mentioned here. I'll make sure I do one that has no English whatsoever. I'll use um, not didactic materials, but materials that are intended for native speakers. And uh, I will do this in multiple languages. And I will do this um, not marching in a park, but uh, seated with my eyes closed so that people can see uh, another way of doing shadowing. Thank you for listening.